coming up next on the Holistic Wealth Podcast. Because when we think about bias, we probably think more about overt bias, overt racism, where people are definitely biased. They know they're biased. They give unequal treatment because of these known biases, which occurs for Black women as well, to be clear. But the implicit bias are ones where people who genuinely mean well, genuinely they do not give substandard care or biased care are giving that substandard and biased care. So Black women are getting care like that from people who both mean well and people who maybe are not so noble. You're listening to the Holistic Wealth Podcast with host Keisha Blair, author of Holistic Wealth and founder of the Institute on Holistic Wealth. And now here's your host, Keisha Blair. Welcome to the Holistic Wealth Podcast. And I'm your host, Keisha Blair. And today we have a special guest with us. We have Dr. Monique Rainford, and Monique is a medical doctor specializing in obstetrics and gynecology. She is a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania and Harvard Medical School, and she is a leading voice in the field of maternal health, and she's dedicated her life to addressing the disparities and challenges faced by Black women during pregnancy. Through her extensive research and personal experiences, she sheds light on the unique journey of being pregnant while Black and advocates for improved health outcomes. We're honored to have Dr. Rainford here to share her expertise and empower us with valuable insights into the crucial topic of Black women's health. Monique, welcome to the show. I'm so pleased to have you here, given that I'm a maternal near-miss survivor myself. Thank you for having me. Mikisha, it's really a very important topic to many, and I am really grateful to be hopefully part of the solution and not part of the problem. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I just wanted to get right into it, Monique, and I just wanted to start off this first segment of the show with just understanding Black women's health disparities. So I know you have so much experience in this area. Can you just shed light and give us an explanation of the health disparities affecting Black women during pregnancy? So when you look at almost every metric, Black women have worst outcomes compared to white women and women of other races. And when I talk about specific metrics, I want to talk about maternal mortality rate, preterm birth rate, rates of preeclampsia or hypertensive disorders of pregnancy infant mortality, stillbirth. So on multiple different measures, the outcome for Black women and their babies are worse than women of basically any other race or ethnicity in the United States. Unbelievable, the disparities. And like, I know there are other factors that contribute to the disparities, whether it's, you know, socioeconomic implicit bias in healthcare and how healthcare is delivered, as well as systemic racism. Can you talk about that in terms of your experience, in terms of these implicit biases and other barriers in the healthcare system? Yeah. So why implicit bias is an important contributor is that when we look at the disparities for Black women and we correct for socioeconomic status, meaning we account for that, we recognize the difference, the outcome for Black women is still worse. And in fact, the disparities between Black women of higher socioeconomic status and white women of higher socioeconomic status are worse. So the differences between those two groups are worse. And in terms of contributor and implicit bias, implicit bias is in some ways insidious. And why I like to describe it that way is because um, implicit bias is a kind of bias that well-meaning people have but do not recognize that they have it. And that is key because when we think about bias, we probably think more about overt bias, overt racism, where people are definitely biased. They know they're biased. They give unequal treatment because of these known biases, which occurs for Black women as well, to be clear. But the implicit bias are ones where people who genuinely mean well, genuinely they do not give substandard care or biased care are giving that substandard and biased care. So Black women are getting care like that from people who both mean well and people who maybe are not so noble, people who have real biases. And so that causes Black women to receive worse care 
And worse care in different ways. Worse care in terms of they may be saying they have a problem and it's dismissed or worse care in terms of with the same problem, they don't get the same level or quality care that, say, a white patient might get. So on those levels, on multiple levels, and obviously it's complex. You mentioned all the other reasons for this disparities or some of the other reasons for this disparities. There are multiple reasons, but implicit bias is a big contributor. Yeah, I know for sure. And of course, like I remember writing an article in the New York Observer about this, both from my personal experience as a maternal near miss survivor and those around me. And as you mentioned, Black women of higher socioeconomic status, like Serena Williams just came to mind and her story about giving birth and the barriers that she faced, almost losing her life because of biases in the system. And it's not quite clear to me. And I know everyone's asking this question. Why is it worse for women, Black women with higher economic status? I don't know if you have any insights, Monique, into why that would be the case, but that would be interesting just to discuss like why that would be worse. Okay. So what is worse? It's not that the overall outcomes are worse between a Black woman of high socioeconomic status compared to a Black woman of low economic status. But it's worse between Black and white women of similar socioeconomic status. So why is that? So usually, higher socioeconomic status, wealth, et cetera, education are protective of bad maternal health outcomes. Usually, say a white woman who has more education and more means generally have better outcomes than a white woman who has lower socioeconomic status and lower means. There are some other factors that can differ, but generally speaking, that's the case. Black women do not have that protection with higher socioeconomic status and higher means. And that's the thing. It just does not protect them in the same way that it would protect a white woman. Why? Again, the question we believe or I believe goes back to biases mm -hmm. in care. Mm -hmm. So, yes, sometimes black women, because of other factors at a specific age, might have worse health than a white woman at a specific age. And I discussed a lot of those issues in the book. But even if she comes in healthier, low risk, her war outcomes are still worse. Again, I think it just plays into, goes back to bias, as I said. I think it's related to bias, both implicit and avert biases in the kind of care that Black women get. Yeah, and now we can see why it's so important that we address implicit bias in the healthcare system. It's just unbelievable that you can have a healthy Black woman walk in to give birth and have worse outcomes just because of implicit bias. Do you have any stats from the book, Monique, on that or any other research findings that you'd want to highlight? So I have a stat here, which frankly, I think is very disturbing. It was very disturbing. It was a study published in 2020 and it looked at infant mortality outcomes in Florida over a specific period of time. And what they found that Black infants had excess deaths, more deaths compared to white infants. And so when the Black infant was cared for by a Black physician, the excess deaths were in the range of 170s to 180s. I think the exact number is 178 per 100,000. I hate to quote exact numbers if I don't have it right in front of me, but mm -hmm. roughly. Mm -hmm. When the Black baby was cared for by a non-Black physician, that excess death rate was over 400 wow. per 100,000. So think about it, a baby. Mm -hmm. When I talk about this statistic, I'm thinking no clinician would be biased, knowingly biased against a baby. I right. refuse to believe that's even possible. Yeah. However, the very fact that there are excess deaths suggests that something else is in play. And this is not because the Black physicians had more training or experience. It is not because they had fewer patients. Frankly, they had more. So based on my review of that article, it was related to implicit bias. Mm -hmm. They did find that if the physician had more training, that excess death difference was less. Mm -hmm. However, to me, that is a very disturbing 
study this very disturbing statistics, but it's true. And it's important because we really need to understand how serious the problem is. And I do believe that study helps shed more light on the problem. We've had Dr. Ushe Blackstock on this podcast in a previous season, Monique, and she also spoke about implicit bias in the healthcare system and also in the administrative side of it. And I gave her the story of, you know, my husband passing away in the emergency room the basic underlying conditions that he walked into the emergency room with should have, to me, should have been picked up. Then they could have gone further to investigate, but not even the internal bleeding could have been caught that night. So I'm just wondering, I'm just leading into this next question about, yes, you know, we're talking about pregnancy, but what about like generally across the healthcare system with just other diseases, other illnesses, and in terms of you know, just outcomes for, for Black people. Do you have any insights? And I know you probably don't have any, you know, like hard stats or anything, but I am assuming that if this exists within the realm of Black maternal health, then it extends to our health writ large. Any observations on that? Yes, Keisha, I'm, I'm so sorry you had such a, a terrible experience. And absolutely, yes, it definitely expend, extends beyond Black maternal health. It's seen in every aspect of the health of Black women in America is seen in the health of Black men in America. As an obstetrician, obviously, my expertise and gynecologist, my expertise is in women's health. When you look at multiple data sets and multiple outcomes like cervical cancer rate, mm -hmm. mortality, breast cancer, breast mortality, cancer. Right. heart disease, mortality, when yes. you look at all those things, diagnosis, I mean, every time you see more literature come out, you see more disparities. Black women, less likely to have the diagnosis, less likely to be diagnosed in a timely manner, more likely to die across multiple outcomes, multiple diagnoses. Mm -hmm. And and black men, black men suffer as well. Yeah. And there is some, you know, excellent researchers in in that space who've who've really enlightened me mm -hmm. on some of the issues that black men face as well. But it's, it is pervasive. It is throughout the Black community, what Black people in America have to face. I know it's not just in America. I just talk about in America because that's where I am. But it's really awful. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's unbelievable what you must see being on the front lines of giving care with your personal professional experience. And so it just leads me into the book and, you know, what was the driving force. Like we've talked about all those issues. I'm sure all of that's wrapped up in it, Monique, but like, what was that point that you said to yourself? I have to have to write about this. Like I have to put out a book to educate people about this. So Keisha, I just saw the disparities first when I was in medical school. Mm -hmm. And at the time, the slide that caught my attention was that the infant mortality rate for a Black American baby was actually worse than the infant mortality rate for a Jamaican baby. And this yeah. is a Black American baby in America compared to a Jamaican baby in Jamaica. And so having grown up in Jamaica, knowing about poverty, and I'm saying, how could that be? Right. U.S. being a developed and such wealthy, such a wealthy country yes. compared to Jamaica. How could that be? And I remember being told maybe not directly, but with different conversations that is due to socioeconomic status. And that did not make sense. Mm -hmm. So finished my training in OBGYN, worked for a little while, went back to Jamaica and lived. And yes, there are disparities in health in Jamaica related to socioeconomic status primarily. Came back to US after a few years. And then I saw more things come out in the lay media TED Talks, written articles that talked more about the other factors that really caused the disparities that were it, and show that it was not about socioeconomic status. That can play a role, of course, but that was not it. And as I saw more and more of this data, more and more of this information, I just felt called or driven to do something about it especially from my vantage point as an experienced obstetrician and gynecology, especially from my vantage point of knowing that so much more can be done and it can be so much better with all the 
wonderful resources that can be available in the U.S. And I think it is also spurred by a core desire of fairness or equity. It's just not fair. Yeah. It's just not right. Yeah. I can't say I had a personal experience that drove me. It just like, this is not right. It is not fair. It doesn't make sense. And yes, I've had experiences with implicit bias throughout my career, but that wasn't the factor that led me. It was something deep down that made me think this is not right. And something deep down that made me feel called to try to do something about it. Yeah, no, it's unbelievable that health disparity between a Jamaican baby and a African-American baby born in the United States. Like I, I just can't get past that because as you mentioned of the, the wealth of resources in the United States versus even Jamaica and Jamaican health system. But I guess it just speaks to the point that you made earlier about when black women had black doctors or have, you know, care being given by black um, healthcare workers, their outcomes are indeed better. And it's so funny because Dr. Blackstock posted on Twitter, I guess, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, something similar that in terms of our heart health outcomes, I think the stat spoke to the fact that Black people living in communities that didn't have access to Black doctors had worse heart health outcomes. And so it was, it's just unbelievable to think. And I'm, as you were speaking, Monique, I was thinking, well, this extends beyond, you know, infant mortality, as we mentioned earlier. So I'm just wondering if we were to do a comparison, and I know that probably does not exist yet, across multiple health outcomes, across multiple chronic illnesses, if that would be the same in terms of the comparison between Jamaica and the United States and having been born in Jamaica myself. That's just unbelievably interesting to me, given that you know, from an immigration perspective and from a wealth perspective, you know, there are so many people across the diaspora, right, that make it their life's mission to live and work and be a part of a system that's far more resourceful to gain access and to gain better lives for themselves and their children and their families. So that was very telling for me. Like, have you seen anything else in terms of like any comparisons with the U.S. and Jamaica in terms of other health outcomes? Or are you just, just looking at, you know, infant mortality? So not direct health outcomes. So there is a different kind of data. So that particular outcome, as I mentioned, was between the infant mortality rate of an African-American baby in America compared to infant mortality rate of a Jamaican baby in Jamaica. So there are different kind of metrics. So, for example, when Caribbeans immigrate to the U.S., they've looked at self-reported health outcomes. And this was another study that I looked at a couple of years ago. And basically it was interesting that the self-reported health information, health outcome for a Caribbean immigrant was better than that of an African-American, but their children was worse. So think about That's it. That's interesting. So, very interesting. So say adult family from the Caribbean moves to America they have better health outcomes than an African-American at first. And then they give birth and they have their children, but their children may have worse outcomes than an African-American. So it just speaks to some of the factors in America related to, I would say, racism that can affect or does affect the health of Black people who come from other countries. And yes, many of us come to America for opportunities, financial opportunities, work opportunities to make a better life for children and our children, children. But we have to remember there's a cost and we have to do what we can to balance that cost. And the cost is racism in America can adversely affect the health of Black people living in America. And that effect increases with the amount of time a Black person lives in America. That's unbelievable. I have goosebumps when you said that there is a cost, there's an opportunity cost. And that's why I wrote Holistic Wealth, because of thinking about that cost. And even, you know, the new and expanded version where I get more into racism and discrimination and the impacts on individuals. It's unbelievable, Monique, that for someone who has tragically lost someone, you know, the generational impacts of that loss, right? And then you spoke about the 
opportunity cost and the racism factored in. And that even if you reach a certain level of wealth and education, that it does not, it does not obliterate or even lessen that. It's, it just speaks to this conversation and the importance of awareness and allowing people to hear this conversation because it's so important. And so Monique, I know that you're promoting the book and doing everything that you can to get this message out there. What has that been like and what has the reception been in terms of, you know, even within the healthcare system, like your colleagues and peers and others hearing this message and hearing these devastating statistics? What has that been like for you? I've had a a lot of positive feedback from people who have heard about the book, particularly Black women have been very expressive Mm -hmm. with their feedback. And when I say expressive, this through social media, this is some people that I have not met, many people that have not met, but really feeling happy that I wrote the book, really feeling that it is important. I've had non-Black men and women read the book and feel moved by it. I'm doing my MBA at Yale, EMBA, executive MBA awesome. at Yale. One of my classmates yeah. and friends, and she's a white woman. And she said, oh, Monique, I loved the book. And that felt so powerful to me because I wrote the book to help Black pregnant women in America. But I know that we, Black women, aren't the only ones who can make a difference. We need help from everyone. We need help from the wider community, multi-ethnicity community who cares. And so I'm hoping that people beyond the Black community will read the book and help solve this problem, help improve the disparities. I am really encouraged by the reception I've received so far. I do hope that more people will read it, more people would learn about it, ask me questions somehow. I'm sure there are ways. And I really want it to be another catalyst for change. And when I say another, there are so many other people who have been working for years to try to advocate for change and blood, sweat and tears to try to advocate for change. I know I'm joining or trying to be a part of the movement for change. But I know I'm not nearly the only one. And I also know that people have been working harder and longer in it. But I still do want to be a part of the solution, as I mentioned, and not a part of the problem. And I want to continue doing more and more for change. But going back to the book, yes, I hope more people across ethnicities, across genders will read it as long as they care about the health of Black women or they care about equity in healthcare so that they can understand the issues, the barriers to equity. Because equity does not just affect Black women. It does not just affect minority women necessarily. (laughs) It can affect white women, white men, based on other factors, based on gender based on, well, I said white women and men, but based on preferences, sexual preferences, based on body size. (laughs) You know, there's so many things that can affect how people are taken care of. But this is written really to show or explain what happens to Black women because it's magnified. I would say it's magnified for Black women. Absolutely. And so before we go, um, Monique, can you tell the audience and for women trying to navigate the healthcare system, Black women uh, navigating prenatal care, can you give some um, some advice for how they go about an advocacy and advocating for themselves in the healthcare system? So while I don't recommend that Black pregnant women read the book because it's a little depressing for them, their village can read the book and educate themselves so they can get tips on advocacy. Their friends, whoever their friends are, all their friends can read the book. Women can try to find a clinician before they get pregnant, if possible. Get advice from women they trust. Black women may need to go to other Black women because sometimes they care that a physician or a midwife gives to a white woman may be different from the care they give to a black woman. So get advice of people they trust. Do try to get themselves educated from reliable 
resources. I won't specifically recommend any right now, but they are reliable resources on the internet, probably even through the health center, ask them for information or their private practice office for information on certain conditions. And then if something is wrong, yeah, do speak up. Say, I'm concerned because this is it. And because I know this could cause this problem. You shouldn't have to know everything, but sometimes knowing more can help you be more specific in your advocacy. And so sometimes that increased knowledge, awareness, information is helpful. And if you don't have time to learn it yourself, I encourage your village to try to find out some of those answers for you. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's very helpful. And I just wanted to just recap just a bit of our key takeaways from the conversation with you and some of the amazing information that you shared. And I just wanted just to quickly go through that for our audience so that they remember, so that it can help us spread the word. But number one, Black women experience significant health disparities during pregnancy, including higher rates of maternal mortality, preterm birth, even low birth weight factors such as systemic racism, implicit biases in healthcare, and socioeconomic factors contribute to these disparities. Dr. Rainford's book, Pregnant While Black, sheds light on the unique experiences of Black women and emphasizes the importance of amplifying their voices in healthcare. Navigating the healthcare system can be challenging for Black women. And so advocating for oneself is crucial to receiving appropriate care. And of course, we spoke about speaking up, advocacy, Black women supporting each other, seeking resources from each other, learning from our community, amplifying our own voices. And I'm just encouraging listeners, if you're listening to this, please share this episode with others. Continue the dialogue, spread awareness as much as you can. And so Monique, where can we find you and the book and where can we link with you on social media? You can find the book basically at the major online platforms, Amazon, my publishers broadly publishing on their website, Barnes and Noble. So that is readily available. It's readily available in some bookstores um, throughout the United States, different areas of the United States. Also, I am easy to find. I can be found through my website, www.moniquegreenford.com. And there's a contact page on that. And using Monique Greenford, you can find me on Instagram, DR Monique Greenford, through LinkedIn, the same name, through Twitter, the same name, through Facebook, the same name. So I'm very easy to find through social media and through my website. And the book is very easy to find and very readily available in a number of online platforms in particular, and some local bookstores. Monique, it has been a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and insights into this important topic. It's such an important topic. And I hope that once everyone has had a chance to listen in, that they'll not only get the book, but they're, you know, they will share this episode and continue to advocate for Black women all across the world as it's so needed. Um, it's unbelievable the impacts and why it's so crucial. So thank you so much for joining us, Monique. It was amazing having you here. Thank you, Keisha. And thanks for all the work you do to amplify these important issues. Really appreciate it. Using your tragedy for tremendous purpose. So thank you so much. The Holistic Wealth Podcast with Keisha Blair is brought to you by. Have you joined the Institute on Holistic Wealth? If you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Choose your membership plan at the Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to join. As a member, you'll get access to free worksheets, advice, coaching, and an intentional design workshop. As you start to live a more holistically wealthy lifestyle, you'll want to stay for a very long time. So go to Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to join. If you haven't read the book yet, pick up a copy of the award-winning best-selling Holistic Wealth 36 Life Lessons to help you recover from disruption, find your life purpose, and achieve financial freedom. 